Welcome to Too Long Didn't Scrolls episode for April the 10th of 2023, marking the 81st day of uploads on TLDS, the show for you to get your daily news fix in a jiffy, with its quick and listenable summaries of important world events from the previous day. No need to scroll through your endless seeming news feed and clicking on each individual news story to find out whatever happened when you have this show. We start the events of this day's episode in the country of Pakistan, specifically focused on the region of Balochistan. Balochistan, neighboring the nations of Afghanistan and Iran, has been at the center of an insurgency movement by nationalist Baloch groups attempting to retain autonomy for the region over the marginalization of one of Pakistan's poorest and least developed regions. Since the 1950s, Baloch separatist groups, now including groups like the Balochistan Liberation Army, the Balochistan Liberation Front, and the Balochistan Nationalist Army, have allied with groups like the Pakistani Tarek e Taliban and other terrorist and militant organizations wreaking havoc on the region's infrastructure and civilian centers through terrorist attacks and clashes with the Pakistani security forces. As of today, another such attack has occurred in the form of a bombing at the Kandahari Bazaar in the city of Quetta. Mere hours apart, two motorcycle bombs had launched towards two police vehicles in the area, triggering explosions that killed at least four people and injuring around 22 others, including multiple police officers. The BLA, the Balochistan Liberation Army, has claimed responsibility for the attack. We now concern ourselves with the Pentagon, the headquarters of the United States of America's Department of Defense. The DoD has been keeping tabs on recent developments in the Russo-Ukrainian war as the current iteration of the invasion trudges on. As of the day of recording, the Pentagon has reported that some of its top secret documents have been leaked in a major breach in DoD systems, which include estimated casualty reports for both Russian and Ukrainian forces, confidential Russian and Ukrainian troop movements and strategies, and other information, there was noted that the copies of the information distributed in Russia appear to have been doctored to exaggerate certain figures as part of a likely misinformation campaign. American agencies have stated that the leaks are traced back to a series of servers on the Discord messaging service, with the earliest link in the train pointing to a Discord server focused primarily on the popular single and multiplayer game Minecraft. American officials have blamed Russian saboteurs for the leaks and have stated they are trying to get to the bottom of the case one that constitutes one of the largest American intelligence weeks since WikiLeaks back in 2013. The leaks included other confidential information, such as reports of American spying on Ukrainian high command, like President Zelensky, Turkish collaboration with the Wagner Group, as well as additional information American intelligence has gained on countries like Iran, North Korea, China, and the United Arab Emirates. In the American city of Louisville and the American state of Kentucky, a shooting has occurred at the local bank in the downtown area. A man stormed into the bank, where he worked, and proceeded to shoot several of his colleagues, killing five people and injuring eight others. The man was also known to have live-streamed the attack on Instagram before he was killed by police. A motive has yet to have been specified. Meanwhile, at the Rutgers University in the American state of New Jersey, which is campuses in the cities of New Brunswick, Newark, and Camden, one of the largest strikes in American educational history has just been voted on to go ahead. The three major unions of the university, comprised of educators and graduate students, has stated that they have been pushing for a year with administration for equal pay and job security across the board, pointing to the fact that graduate students are only being paid a mere fraction of other full-time peers and that their attempts have been repeatedly dismissed. After a letter by University President Jonathan Holloway stating that any strike could be unlawful, controversy erupted among the unions clamoring for him to rescind the statements, leading to the eventual vote for a strike among the unions to occur. The forthcoming strikes would affect a faculty of 67,000 students and 9,000 staff, and is the first strike to occur on Rutgers grounds in its 257-year history. In the Lingsou County in the Chinese province of Shandong, the two prominent Chinese civil rights activists have been sentenced to prison for lengthy amounts of time. These two activists include Xu Ziyong and Ding Jiaxi, who are po- popular for advocating for improved civil freedoms and greater transparency into how the government of the PRC works. As of the day of recording, a local court has sentenced the two to 14 and 12 years in prison for the crime of subverting state power, in a closed-door trial accused by many to be completely farcical.